2015, um, we had Hurricane Joaquin that, that kind of camped out along the coast and, and just created this funnel of moisture and dumped historic rainfall um, in the Midlands of South Carolina. And so really affected a lot of our service area and, and created some tragic flash flooding um, consequences for us. In particular though, our Columbia Canal embankment was overtopped and that created a breach and uh, really threatened our water supply for a period of, of about 10 days. We began you know, and continued some rather intense negotiations um, on trying to make sure that our ratepayers weren't burdened with helping us recover from a natural disaster that we felt like was well within FEMA's scope. So after several years of study, back and forth, negotiation, um, third party evaluators coming in and looking at our data, we agreed on a scope of work that was valued at a little over $40 million. That was to repair the embankment, repair the breach, repair any scour that happened along the toe of the embankment, and some other miscellaneous repairs and damage that occurred along the, the, the length of the embankment. As our design matured, we had to do some geotechnical investigation, and we discovered that what lies beneath where the breach occurred would be considered unsuitable material for today's design standards. So in order for us to repair back to the scope of work that FEMA had approved, that would mean putting select fill material and compacting that on top of unsuitable material. That was an additional around $13 million um, of scope that was recently added to the project. Now that's only one piece of the puzzle. If we rebuild our embankment back to as good as it was, or maybe a little better than it was in 2015, we're still vulnerable to a rain event that would happen like that again. We started looking at our, our head gates and, and the age and condition of those head gates that allowed the water to come into the, um, into the canal system. And it became pretty obvious that those needed to be replaced, those needed to be modernized. We were able to apply for, through HUD, uh, a Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery Program, and we were able to get $8 million to replace each of those head gates. But how do we improve our resilience so that we can be better in case the unthinkable happens again? And that's the third leg of the stool. That's our alternate water supply project. We're going to have a permanent intake directly in the river, a permanent pumping station directly in the river, so that if, God forbid, something like happened in 2015 were to happen again, um, our customers will never know the difference. We conceptualized that work and conceptualized a pretty hefty price tag of around $45 million. We applied for a, um, a FEMA grant through the Building Resilient Infrastructure for Communities program, the BRIC program, and we were awarded um, a very large grant, 75% of that project will be funded directly through that FEMA BRIC grant. The fact that 10 cent out of every dollar that's spent, that's all that's coming from the city's coffers and the rest is coming from, um, from FEMA or grant funding through HUD, to me that's, that's also a very, very good story. I think this is going to help us heal when folks see a, um, a, a canal that's back operating again like it was before the, the natural disaster. Um, there's some healing involved there just for our community and it's in a long time coming and so we're really looking forward to that. Also being able to produce good green power. Um, that there's a lot of lost opportunity from us having a rock dam in place and not being able to push water through the hydroelectric generating station. That's a lost opportunity from, from an economics, but also from just good green power. Appreciate our citizens and customers' patience as we've navigated this process. Um, we strongly believe that it's gonna be worth it in the long run.